Aloha, everybody. We are back. We are back. Yes, we're back one day early. I know we we're supposed to do Thursday, but we're here on a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. Um, I'm excited to be here again. And we're going to talk more about love with Adora. We've got um, some exciting things to talk about. There she Bye. is. Hello, Adora. What's happening? Hello, my friends. Oh, I gotta turn Hello, my, everyone. The volume up here. I'm way, way down. Meeting after meeting, I'm like, okay, there we go. Much, much better. How you doing today? Hi, wonderful. How are you? I am good. I'm good. I just got off a beautiful conversation with the woman that you introduced me to. Debbie uh, Peterson. Debbie. Yeah, so. Fantastic. We'll, uh, we'll, yeah, she we'll said she was going to try to jump in and listen to us. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, we, we talked about getting on her show, which she's doing amazing, amazing work in the health and wellness space holistically yeah. and her story. Uh, and why she does her purpose. You hear me talk about this all the time with everybody, but her purpose, her vision, her mission on why she does what she does is incredible. So once you lock oh. that in people, once you understand your purpose, right? It can change, it'll shift, it'll evolve just like love and we're gonna get into that. But, oh my gosh, grab onto it. It's really gonna guide, guide your life. So mm -hmm. um, grateful to see all these people popping in, showing up. So um, let's just jump in as people come in. And by again, once as always, you got questions. If you're curious, maybe it was something we talked about last week or even today on defining love for yourself and what that means. So I want to ask you, how, so, you know, if someone's trying to find love and let's just, everyone's lost, they're confused. We all get in this state. Like now, just so everyone's clear, if you're in a relationship, this is for you. If you're single, this is for you because yes. it, you have to define love first. And how do you, you start? How, you know, where do you start with that? It's so big. Well, I, I think first we step back from the conversation, right? We know that love is the most powerful force in the universe, right? Sure. And we know that it's the most profound question we can either ask ourselves or each other and simultaneously impossible to define what is love, right? And, you know, is it an energy? Is it an emotion? Is it something, is it a noun? Is it a verb? Mm. Is it patient? Is it kind as we're taught and told? Um, is it the source of everything in our day-to-day -day life as we often believe it to be? Yeah. But I think, for this conversation, framing it in the context of our loving relationships, right? And those relationships that we have with our partner or our desired partner or the partners that we've had in the past. And I think this is where we can get really curious because despite everything that love is or, or it isn't, it is a powerful teacher in our lives. It's a powerful force of healing. It mm. is a powerful force of awakening. Yeah. It is a powerful force of magnetic connection. And, and I think as we deep dive into this conversation shot, I mean, we could go on, we could talk about this for hours. Well, for ages. I mean, for ages. I mean, the, the Greeks, everyone is trying to figure, hello, everybody, hello. trying to figure out this thing, love. I mean, there's tons of songs about it. There's tons of mythology about it, right? Can't buy me love. You know, you name it. Like, the this, this love is in all of these songs, and everyone's trying to put their finger on this, right? Mm -hmm. And I love that you articulate it as a force, as an, mm -hmm. energy, as, as an energy that you know because everyone's trying to find it and it seems so elusive and I'm, yeah. and I'm like okay and where do we begin on this this journey how do we map ourselves on this journey yes. of love right um and and so when you define it as this force which i love this energy that's accessible to everybody right where do you find the places that, that the experiences that you've had or the people that you coach um mm -hmm. where do i take that that step that you know that every journey begins you know of a thousand miles begins with the first step exactly uh, and it step? begins right here and right now okay 
Because wherever we've been in our life, in terms of love, loving relationships, love for ourselves, love for divine and love for another, in this moment, we have a profound opportunity to shift, to transform, to reframe what love is, to reconfigure our intention and invitation for what love can be. Because so many of us, we get into relationship and we go, well, if I love someone, then I have to give them everything. All of my time, all of my energy, all of my resource, my money, my body, my heart, my mind, my soul. Without Without boundary and yet that certainly is not love right? Right. right because love is free it is honoring it is respecting it is perhaps not completely definable but we can have boundaries mm. to define what we experience in loving relationships and so, yeah. so i think this is really important and then when we reframe and we look back i think we want to be curious about the question. What does it mean to me? What does it mean to you? Um, what, and when we answer that question for ourselves, I think we want to follow those threads back to when we were young and we first saw how love was modeled in our family, mm -hmm. right? In our family dynamics with our parents or primary caregivers. How was love showed or not showed? How were, were, was communication loving and respectful and honoring in nature yeah. or was it more dysfunctional and distorted right yeah. was love something that was palpable in your home or was it something that was confusing painful and distorted mm -hmm. because you know when we start to think about love in our core relationships <clears throat> this is where we tend to have the most confusing confusion and pain right, from relationships mm. of the past. But we can't really understand that until we go back and look at how our belief system of love and our patterns of emotional engagement in love was formed. And of course, we do that from our early childhood developmental years, right? Yeah. And so being in the curiosity of that and being in the observer effect um, is very powerful because awareness is the first step of transformation. Yes, so true. I, that is exactly the first, I agree with you 100%, is awareness. And for anybody, like you said, we get those social cues from the experiences or maybe we had a bad breakup and, you know, to quote songs, love hurts, love stinks or, or bleeding in love, you know, like all of these songs we hear, like that might be your experience so far, right? Yeah. And trying to people go, oh, I'm not getting married. Love stinks. Love is too painful. It's too this. It's too that. And that might be their, of course, interpretation of this very like, to, to bring yourself to this present moment. Yeah. But how is that belief system, as you said, that belief of love serving you now? Yeah. Is it making you bitter? Is it making you angry? Is it make that's not a judgment. So if you get into the self awareness and you start to audit how you feel about love, just start there. Mm -hmm. so how do I feel? This is my big, big thing to start with. Like, how do I currently, in this present moment, today, how do I feel about love? Am I angry? Am I bitter? Is it something that's just out there for everybody else? Or, yeah. right, right? Or is it something I see in a movie, right? What does love mean to me? And what does it feel like? And I want you, and really, I want you to feel that in your bones, literally how this, you may go, and I want you to be with yourself. This isn't about the, the couple, the neighbor has a beautiful relationship or the angry, bitter couple who's fighting all the time. That's their interpretation of how they experience love or maybe your parents or like you said, a caregiver. I wanna know, I want you to know most importantly, how you feel about love. How do I feel and sit with that? Mm. And in solitude. And especially if you're, um, you know, people are like, oh, I'm lonely, I'll never find the one or the soulmate or whatever. You're not lonely, that's an interpretation of it. You actually have an opportunity to be in solitude. Yes. You can shift that, like you said, reframing, shift that perspective. Like you're not loneliness, you're not stuck in loneliness. You've been blessed with solitude. Think about the mother with 
five kids who are like, oh my God, I would pay to have five minutes of solitude, right? But this is your opportunity now mm. to go, what do I feel about love? And you may have anger and bitter, bitterness come up and be okay with that right now, right now. I All love right? what you're saying because there is so much power in this moment and being with what is. Mm. And I, and I love what you're saying, like feel into it. Even in this moment, you can grab a piece of paper and a pen and jot down your first five thoughts and feelings about love. Yeah. And it, do I trust it? Do I welcome it? Am I open? Am I closed? Am I like, no way, no thank you? Right. Or am I like, yes, please, I'll do anything. Right, the pendulum when it swings too far in each direction is also not balanced, yep. and yet you can get so much insight from how you truly feel when you just take a few minutes of being present with yourself in this moment through your breath. Right, deepen your breath, breathe in from the lower belly, allow your feelings to be present. It is when we allow our feelings to be present that they can be set free. Yeah. We can Absolutely. hear their, their voice, right? We can learn from them. Yeah. So that curiosity is one of the precursors to those quantum leaps along our path of spiritual growth, of transformation, of cultivating the love that we truly desire. And it happens right now in this moment. Mom of seven. Incredible. Know. My hat's off to you. You are living your purpose, Mama. Wow. <laughs> For sure. That is absolutely, that's a what great a place to start. Because when you identify these, you now have an opportunity to let that, that thought go and start opening up the mental space to create the love that you want. But if you're not clear on that love, there is no way. Like you may, you you may like run into somebody and you got this great chemistry, which does not mean you're compatible, by the way, two different things that'll probably be another topic for another day. But you make, oh my God, I love you. And you're like, it's day one. Like, I just love this person. Like, and the, and the other person goes, wait, that, that's not my interpretation of love. I just love having you over for the night. Doesn't mean I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we, if we're not clear about what we mean when we say, and feel, I love you, then we're living in someone else's reality and, and, and there's an inconsistency and we'll never, we're chasing this love like, oh my God, I put my heart out there. I said, I love them. I'm like, but did you understand what love means to them? Yeah. Right. So, but I would encourage everyone to get clear about how you feel and you may not like it. And like, like you were saying, write it down mm. and it's time to let go of that so now I want to open my mind, my heart, my soul to the vision of what I feel love really is. People go, I don't know what to do. I don't know what that is. I don't know who Mr. Perfect is or Mrs. Perfect is. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Start with this. How do you want to feel in love? What does love feel like to you? Mm -hmm. Right? And then you go, I don't know. All right, start loving yourself. And you're going to find these having a loving relationship with you first. Sounds selfish, selfish, but it's selfless. It's so true. We cannot have a healthy relationship with anyone outside of ourselves until we come into the practice of loving ourselves first, of having compassion, of having forgiveness, of having acceptance for each and every moment, each and every step, each and every breath we've taken since our first, yeah. right? And that, that's how we can come to a place of receptivity to a loving relationship with another human soul, right? It starts here, right. it starts here. So when we say be in the curiosity, be in the feeling, look at parts of your past of relationships that you've been in, look at your early childhood dynamics and how love was shown, expressed or not, hidden or distorted. These are all aspects that are living inside of you until the point of reconciliation. And that is some very deep work. Now, 
for many of us, we, we get so far on our path of growth and healing. And then we say, okay, there's these uh, aspects here, these patterns, these blind spots, these things that keep showing up. And I know I need some help to be able to move through them, to be able to heal and grow and create the life and the love of my dreams and desires. And that's why there are many, many resources out there from therapists of many different uh, variations, as well as the beautiful programs that Sean and I are putting together. And one of the reasons that we come here with you every week is to remind you that you're not alone and that you you are worthy of the deepest love, the most harmonious relationships of your hearts and souls desire. That's so, so true. That's the, that's the biggest thing to realize. You know, we talked about loneliness and solitude. And one thing you are never alone. There are so many great resources that one can reach out to. And again, if anybody has any questions or thoughts on what we've said today, or even more curious about it, please put them in the comments and, and we'll get to it. But, um, being able to, if you feel like you haven't healed from love and then you're already gonna jump into another relationship is gonna be unsuccessful. You'll be continuing to live the same pattern over and over and over and over until you begin to understand what love really means to you. Mm. Not to what your parents taught you, not to what the last relationship taught you, the last boyfriend, the last girlfriend, right? Or even your current relationship, by the way. This is beautiful for both of you to really kind of go, what does love mean to me, right? And lift, like, I, what does it mean? And then mm. what do I, and, right? And have the other part of your partner do it. What does love mean to me? And when you come together and go, okay, let's share that thought. And you may go, oh my God, I thought love was this. No, I thought love was this. That's true. <laughs> right? I right? love that you said this because you can go out right now and ask probably a thousand people oh, yeah. and with each one get a very different answer right because it is so subjective and it is framed upon the lens from our past as yeah. well as what we desire for our futures right i asked my partner this morning so what does love mean to you and he said well, well it means n not ever having to question Right, mm -hmm. always knowing that the other person is gonna be there for me. And I thought, well, that's really beautiful. I never would have made that association. I had, and conversely, I have clients that come to me and say, I love my family, I love my pets, but when it comes to being in a new relationship, I am terrified to open my heart. Yeah. I, I am terrified. So, because love has been so hurtful in the past, I can't fathom what it means to have a healthy, harmonious, honoring, respectful, fulfilling relationship. And these are some of the things that we're going to be diving deep into in the retreats and other programs that are coming out yeah. in May and perhaps even before. We'll see. We've got a lot I of work know. ahead of us. Oh, a lot. Um, but we're so committed to really creating a map for you, mapping the way to either your beloved your soulmate or mapping the way to deepening your connection your communion your intimacy your symbiotic that kind of passionate but a uh, beautiful energy that continue that can continue to be created through time and so you know we we are constantly thinking of different ways that we can communicate this to you but we want to ask you too what are you most curious about type it into the comments let us know what you want to learn more about let us know the parts of you where you're like i i want to have this relationship but i'm scared or i'm confused or i don't know what to do next yeah right it's a great word you mentioned I, when you said you know love is terrifying um i'm sure many people feel that way uh, why you know when we're sitting here talking about you know open your heart open your life be harmonious be you know i'm like just and I'm saying all these things, and it, I'm sure it's difficult to resonate if you're like, yeah, that's great for you yeah, or yeah. for you. But I'll tell you, love is terrifying for me yeah. if that is how you feel. And it may be very well how you feel. Look, trust me, uh, I've had stages in my life where love is terrifying. I'm like, oh, nope, I got burned so bad. I put my heart out there. I thought, trust, this was all. And I just am like, 
my voice went up three octave. I was talking to my buddy. <laughs> um, you know, he's like, what happened to you, man? I'm like, nothing. He goes, you're lying. I'm like, well, this girl broke up with me. We broke up or whatever, right? And I, I, I'm like, well, I'm just never going to put my heart on the line again, right? Which is not what we want to do. Yeah. We want to heal that. If you do say to yourself, love is terrifying, love hurts, love is untrustworthy, love is, um, you know, all of perhaps some of these words that, that have a low vibration, mm -hmm. low energy that you're putting into the world. So if you're putting this, I don't want to get too far into the weeds with this energetic vibrational frequency, but think about this. If you're putting that out into the world, love is terrifying, love is scary. And yet in your heart, you want it. It is nearly impossible to attract it. Those two things are, are, are two different polarities. You're literally saying you want something to yourself and you're crying in the mirror and your tears and I get it. Like, oh my God, I'll never find the love I want. And that what your frequency says, you're going, I just, love is just terrifying. I That's can't. what we'll see. Yeah. I, I, if I got that vibe from a girl or somebody, I'd be like, oh, she's scared. Or she's just got, she's like, you've seen, I've seen people on walls. They're like, I will never, when I was single, I'm like, I am not talking to that person. It is, there's a lot of work there. I can't break through it. I don't want to break through it. Right. So the reason I share that example is if you're identifying that in yourself, that it's scary and that it sounds, you know, when we say these language about being harmonious and finding a deeper connection, like in our sacred relationship, and also, you know, mapping your way to the, to the one soulmate, right? If we're talking about it and that just doesn't make sense, let's just back up a minute. Why? Does that not make sense to you? Or why is it not vibrating or resonating, I guess a great word, for you? Mm -hmm. Then give yourself some compassion because you're gonna have to slowly remove yourself. This is what we'll talk about at the retreats, how you can just slowly, one thing at a time, because you may have a litany of what you think, and what, like she said, write it down. So you can look at it in the face and say that to yourself, because yeah. it's gonna be hard. And even if you put that in a voicemail, well, here's what love is. Love is this. Love is painful. Love is untrustworthy. Love is, and I'm not, I'm only going in the darker space because if you're in that space, I want you to find a way out Yeah. because you're also in a loving place and you want to go deeper by all means, but let's just, we can do that too. We can heighten that experience, mm. but let's get through if it is painful and some of the hurts and the, and the wounds that we have to create the love that we want. Mm -hmm. It's so true because at our very core, it is our human nature to deeply desire feeling seen, feeling heard, feeling supported, feeling understood for all of who we are. Think about how many relationships that you may have been in where it felt really good for a while, but then you're like, this person really doesn't get me. Mm -hmm. And how that, how that feels, right? Mm -hmm. That is like being alone um, in a relationship of two. And yep. So that's why the inner journey is, is rich, right? With all of this wisdom, this knowledge that is held within you. Right. But we mm. got to go in and we got to ask ourselves those questions. We've got to go in and bring that love to ourselves first and foremost. And, and we can do that all together right now, because whether we're single or whether we're in the relationship with our soulmate, we anything that we come to when we come to it, when our cup is full, it is a completely different magnetic point of attraction with the universe mm. and you see that what do you get back from whether it's your colleagues or somebody at the grocery store or your child of course your beloved is going to be very different when you come feeling filled yeah. from yourself first so let's take a deep breath together okay. let's envision and a beautiful pink light filling our hearts and filling our hearts all together here. We are a sacred community, even here on Instagram. And we can bring in the intention of love and healing and presence right here in this moment. Envision that pink light coming into your heart and filling the entirety of your being, even every nook and cranny where it feels a little uncomfortable where it might feel cold or dark or hidden. 
just envision that pink light coming through and filling your being until your cup feels full. The love that you crave is held within you and your love can heal, can transform, can create anything and everything. Beautiful. I love that. I, you had me at love can create, you can create. <laughs> and love yeah. is an unbelievable source to create everything. And it's a necessary source, by the way to creation, mm -hmm. right? So I love that. I would just, just leave it right there. I think it was so beautifully said. Um, I hope this was of, of value to you out there. And I'm, I'm so, this is what a beautiful way to end it and just sitting with this beautiful sense of love and go out there today with that light of love mm -hmm. and, and just be it, just, just be that. It's okay. And you'll start to see the vibrations in the world around you and people who are closed and I, Yolanda I see you in this you know your love is in a steel box I get you 100% we've done some work together right so let's open that up but if I don't want to get deep dive into that but if you're seeing it as that way you're going to have to forge it like you melt steel right like yes. we do it possible so you just know that you're in the process of that not locked in a steel box you're actually in the middle, in the process of forging, of melting, right? That's into something even better than you envisioned. So mm. thank you, each and every one of you. We appreciate you showing up. We'll be back next Thursday again. Yes. Um, and if you have questions about this or the retreat, don't hesitate to reach out. DM us or, or, or reach out for a discovery call. Absolutely. Right? We're here to support you on this journey. So thank you all again for being here. Beautiful. And many blessings to all. Thank you. Bye, Bye Sean. Bye. Bye.